Uh, news just came out at the Ohio State exhibition, 7 o'clock uh, next Friday. Uh, how did all that come together? What is the, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the genesis behind bringing this thing to life? And uh, tell fans what they can expect next Friday. Yeah, well, first off, um, Anthony Grant at Dayton, they did a game with Ohio State last year a charity game to raise awareness for mental health. And there's some things that are personal to him of why he started that. I think anybody that looks into it, it's a, touch, it's a touching deal. So, um, you know, there were lots of uh, rumors, proposals about rule changes to be able to do some exhibition games. Um, Division one to Division one, right, before the season. And there was a lot of people posturing to prepare for that. That proposal got shot down, but as the as we were looking to find somebody to do a game like that with before the proposal was shot down, um, you know, Jake Diebler and I at Ohio State had a number of conversations. Uh, Xavier and Dayton were already putting the game on, so before that proposal was shot down, there was an idea of let's get involved with uh, th this this cause to get all four teams in the state involved under one roof would be a really neat thing so it started based on that and, I, and I, I give Jake a lot of credit I think he was the guy that got everybody on a call together all four coaches um, so before they even shot the exhibition there was an idea to try to bring all that together uh, because the Dayton and Xavier game had already been set up it was difficult to figure out how to do that all under one roof when they shot down the D1 exhibitions there was still an ability to do this under the charity rules so it worked out for us, and I might this may be more information than everybody needs or wants, uh, but we couldn't get all four programs under one roof. I do think there'll be a push to figure that out in the future, uh, but but Jake and I had agreed whether we could pull that off or not, that we would try to do something, and it made more sense just given some kind of facility dynamics to start that here, uh, but look for it, to be able to continue in the future to support this cause. Uh, Care Source is, is sponsoring not just this game, but the, also the game, the Dayton Xavier game. So it's nice that there's a title sponsor that, that is involved in this. So I think this is something that will continue, I, I hope. I think the other coaches probably feel the same way. And then it's a great opportunity to get uh, a game in front of our fans uh, before the official season starts. So I think that's there's value in that. Usually it's been the, cro the closed-door scrimmage thing, which you guys are all – the, se the secret stuff you're not allowed to talk about. But to be able to do that type of a thing and have fans there, I think there's a lot of benefit long-term for that. I, I'm, let me make it clear. Like, you know, you don't ever play a possession and don't want to win the possession. But we won't approach it like a real game. I mean, we're not going to substitute the way we'd substitute in a real game. Um, we're not going to coach in this from a strategy standpoint the way we would in a real game. But we're going to try to be very competitive possession after possession. So in that sense, it's not a real game. But in the sense that we want to go out and, and play the best we can and learn from it, it is. Some of us weren't privy to the, uh, the tip-off dinner, but uh, Roy Williams was here. He, you know a lot about him. Um, well, you just didn't buy your tickets fast enough, Scott. It sold, it sold out quickly. There's a so. story behind that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did Coach Roy say about your guys? Because obviously he's a Hall of Famer, and uh, what was it like for, to have him in? Well, <clears throat> it's the second year that we've done it, and it's hopefully a tradition that we can kind of continue to build on here. Uh, but just having a night, uh, that's it, it's great to see our guys get dressed up. You know, everybody gets to see them in their uniforms, but to see them in suits and see them all snazzy, I think, that's fun for me. It's fun for them. It's fun for others to see them in that light. It's a chance to celebrate them first and foremost, to get to know them in a sense outside of basketball. Uh, so I think the people that, that come to that event appreciate that. And then, you know, we added uh, having a guest speaker this year. And, you know, I was really, really fortunate to have uh, my college coach and one of the guys that I think is the greatest to ever do it. Uh, to, to come spend time with us. That was obviously really, really special for me for a, a variety of reasons, right? On a personal level, it's touching. And then it's just really neat for for my coach, you know, the, somebody that I look up to as much as anybody in the world to come see where I work and, you know, the, the passion for Cincinnati basketball uh, to see that firsthand and then get around our players. So 
I was glad everybody got a, got a glimpse of, you know, Coach Williams. And I think anybody in the room that night felt his energy, felt his competitiveness, his drive. And that's what I feel every time I get the opportunity to be around him. Michael Jordan for guest speaker. Uh, if, if you can get him to say yes, that'd be great. That'd be great. UC Basketball posted a video. You were talking today about, like, the amount of buzz in the locker room. You guys bring back six of your eight best players from last season. You did lose John Newman, who you talked about was such a special player. Who kind of lines up to step into that defensive stalwart role with this roster now? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I actually stopped practice uh, somewhere here in the first week and had to remind our team he's not coming back. You know, I, I wish he could because, you know, John was one of those guys that, you know, you could put him on any of the five guys on the other team and the chances were he was going to shut them down and take them out. And uh, he was willing to take on any defensive challenge, sacrifice his body, any physical challenge. Um, I don't have a great answer for you, but we need somebody on this team to emerge there. There's certainly a handful of guys that are capable of it. and uh, But we, we need somebody to – and hopefully it's not just one. Hopefully we get three or four or five or six that play defense the way that John did and have the focus and competitive nature on that end the way that John did. So there's a number of guys that are very capable, but we got to emerge there. Speaking of defensive cornerstones, you get Aziz Bandego, no, no waiver issues to deal with this year. What what kind of just peace of mind and overall propelling and kind of e extension or kind of a, a jump do you think it's, it allowed him to take in his offseason just knowing that he's going to be ready to roll for the full season? Yeah, I, I think it, at this stage is a real benefit, you know, the – just the nature of not knowing, I think that's that's got to be, as we talked about a lot up here last year, that had to be very difficult. And then from a preparation standpoint as a staff and as a team, not knowing kind of held back our ability to prepare for it. Uh, obviously, th this year, th whether it's starting with the summer stuff all through the fall and now, he's such a big part of, you know, the design of how we play on offense and defense. So... We've been able to kind of dive right into that, and you hope that has some of the effects that it should have. But only if we go out and do the work, it's not going to happen just because. From momentum at the end of last season by Jizzle James and a lot of hype around him this offseason, what have you seen from Jizzle as he gets back acclimated with the program for year two for him? Yeah, I, I said this on a podcast uh, earlier today with Dan Horde. I mean, I, I've 14, this is my 14th year as a head coach. I don't think I've ever had a freshman that was as consistent and diligent with his work ethic on the court as Jizzle was last year as a freshman. So, you know, people talked about he surprised how he finished the year. And the heck no, I wasn't surprised because, I mean, I watched this guy come out. And, and now we've had guys work at it now. But as a freshman, I've never seen somebody that worked at it like he did day after day after day. When you work at it like that, you're going to find some results. And certainly he's talented enough to find some results. Um you know he's 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 done that again here this summer this fall. Um, he's he started the same way kind of did with the work ethic. He's got to sustain that, but he's significantly he's a significantly improved player. In fact, I was laughing, kind of chuckling watching film here at night a lot the last couple of weeks, thinking about where he was at this time last year and where he is now. It's just significantly different. Um, but again, like anything, it's not going to just happen. We got to continue to come in and do it every day. I got. A lot of confidence. Jizzle's going to come in and work at it every day. Have you seen him make this all season to get back into that rotation? Guys, he led our team in rebounding this summer on offense and defense. And if you guys know me well, I like that stat. I like the I like the rebounding stat on both sides, and so. That was a really good sign. I'd say we, we got an edgy, competitive group. Uh, he's been as competitive and as physical and as edgy in between the lines as any player on our team from the start of summer till now. That that bodes well for him finding his way onto the court. We know he has gifts, right? We wouldn't have brought him here if he didn't. But he's he's done a nice job of doing some of the little things, and specifically the way he's cutting, running the floor, rebounding on both ends it stood out to date 
and I'm not diminishing the other things he can do on the floor that you guys already know about. You bring back six guys. You bring in three transfers. Six guys that played significant minutes last year. You bring in three transfers. A highly rated freshman. Ray that's red shirting. Is it a challenge for the coaching staff or to, to figure out how exactly this puzzle fits together because there are a bunch of guys that, that are capable of helping? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think I think after going through the the summer and the fall and the preseason last year where you, you there was so much up in the air and there were so many new faces you hadn't coached, that was a much more significant challenge to date than anything we've dealt with now because you have such a good feel for the returning players because you've coached them for a year. Uh, and then, you know, I think the assimilation of the incoming guys has been more natural and it's happened faster because they have examples of how they're supposed to do things and how we do things here, right? Uh, so I, I think like the uh, when you retain players, like retention is a compounding effect. It's not just that Dan Skillings is a better player as a junior than he was as a sophomore, and that's what we hope. It's also that he knows what we do and he knows how we do it. But that doesn't just affect Dan. It also affects the, the new guy in the program that gets to watch Dan. So they're not just trying to listen to – the coaches say this is what we do and how we do it. They get an example in front of them. So I think that that's helped in a lot of ways. Uh, th there's always going to – if you've if you done a nice job of assembling a roster, there's always going to be challenges with playing time and challenges with combinations. But yeah, those are the kind of challenges you want as a coach. And if we can be fortunate, we've had a – you know, the only really bad news I have today is Tyler McKinley. You know, get going down with a knee injury in our first practice. And, guys, he had such a terrific summer, such a terrific fall. We thought a ton of him. He was exceeding our expectations. And I said that to everybody that is in my inner circle long before he got hurt. He was he was one of the guys, if you said, who surprised you? I, I thought he'd be good, and he was better than that. I mean, so so much so I was surprised. Uh, but he went down. He, he had knee surgery. Uh, a week or so ago, and he's he's going to be out for the year. Like, that's a significant blow. And that really hurts the depth in our front court. And a guy that we thought was, you know, a guy we thought was going to be really good here but was doing better than that or trending ahead of where we thought he'd be. So you can't, you can't have stuff like that continue to happen. But outside of that, if you've done a nice job assembling a roster, you're going to have some difficult decisions to make. As I say all the time, we play every day in practice and we compete. They're going to help us make those decisions, right? They're they're going to earn the roles that they're in, and uh, that's how they've all approached it thus far. And I think that's been good for our team. How has McKinley handled that? And then you have mentioned that both Tyler's would would play. How is Tyler Betsy? I I mean, Tyler McKinley is handled. You know what he's been through over the last two weeks is as well as anybody's capable of handling it. But as you guys can imagine, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it's heartbreaking. He's on crutches, and you know he's going to be on crutches for the next three weeks or something like that. I mean, so he's handled it great, but I can't imagine it's been very easy. It hadn't been easy for us. So, I mean, and he's the guy that's dealing with it. So, uh, yeah, that's been heartbreaking there. But uh, Tyler Betsy. Is, is I tell you what, guys, he's going to be a terrific player. I mean, it, it's not a question of if, it's when. And he continues to improve. His work ethic's been admirable. He's smart and picks up concepts quickly. And uh, it, it's all in there. You, you see glimpses of it every single day. But uh, I've, I've been really impressed with him thus far. Tell us about the, the newest addition, Halvine Zella and uh, – what he uh, brings to the program this year, and is there any possibility we see him this year, or is he a red shirt? It, it, right now, he's a red shirt. We'll see. Um, you know, I think we're looking looking into that. But the uh, he was the captain of the U18 French national team, so that should tell you a little bit about the kind of kid he is, and you know what his teammates. And that uh, you guys may not, people out there may not understand the national team stuff in Europe, but that's a big, big deal in those countries. In, in Eastern and Western Europe, 
to to be represented on your national team, even at the youth levels, and then to be selected captain is a massive deal. That impacted me a lot, and we were talking about bringing him over here. So that that says a lot about him, and that's been evident having him here in just a really short period of time. We've thrown him in the fire. I mean, these guys have been at it all summer together, all fall, and he shows up, and now we're kind of rocking and rolling. That's really difficult. He's handled it pretty dang well. Um, He's handled it really dang well, but it's not been an easy transition just – because he didn't get to start at the same time everybody else did. Does it feel like Simas Lukosius, from your view, his work this summer, he can carry over that hot streak he started to close the season? Um, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't call it a hot streak. I, I thought Simas just. I thought two things happened. He got healthy in league play. You know, he dealt with a lot last fall. He got healthy and got in great shape in league play. And so as we got into that, especially that second portion of league play. He was healthy. He finally found some rhythm. And then, two, we, we kind of figured out how to utilize him even better w- within our offensive structure. And, you know, he's a guy that y- you can put on the ball in, in all kinds of different action with the ball in his hands. Great passer, big, can pass over the top, shoots it, scores it. And then he's a guy that you can space. You know, you can space him as a shooter around others. And then he's a guy you can run off of screens. And we kind of learned that as we went. And so, it, it's again, there's a better understanding of what we do. And we have a better understanding of him. So we, we do expect big things from CMOS. Thanks. Connor, what's the adjustment been like? practice every day with, with this group of guys getting you know used to Mike great belt in the, in the weight room it, it seems like from the outside that, that you've adjusted well to everything yeah I think the adjustment has gone well so far you know going to a new school you're kind of like a freshman again so you kind of have to think on the floor again I'm out there I'm not at Bradley anymore doing the same drills I've done for three years around the same people with the same coaches so It's a little more stress just because you're not as comfortable, but then it's also pretty exciting because you're in a place where there's a lot of great players and you know every day you're going to go out there and improve. So I think the adjustment has gone pretty well. Are the rims a little more forgiving now that you have a C. Paul instead of a Bradley Brave uniform on? (laughs) Um, Yeah, I would think so. I I think when I played here last, they were were pretty forgiving, so it was okay. Tell us about how how you got here. Uh, I know Drew uh, mm-hmm. Adams played a big part, but uh, just your road to Cincinnati. Yeah, I think now in college basketball, after every year, you do have to consider the transfer portal and where you're at. And I think there's a lot of evidence of that with thousands of players in the portal at a time. But when the year ended, I considered it and I thought, you know, the best move for me and kind of what how my career path and how I wanted to go, I, I, entering the portal was probably the best option for me. And then knowing Coach Drew was here, I knew I had that connection as well. I mean, we are from the same hometown, played at the same high school, played AAU for his dad. My trainer is one of his good friends. My dad is friends with him, so it just seemed right. And right when I hit the portal, I think he was one of the first people to contact me. So, Coach Ray felt, picked you as monster of the summer um, mm-hmm. in the weight room. When did you kind of develop that? willingness to compete not only on the basketball Mm -hmm. floor but also like you know in in, in the dark in the weight room uh i credit a lot of that to my high school and where i went bloomington south uh i had a knee injury in eighth grade and after that i really started to hit the weight room and i noticed that it really does have an effect on the court you know i was able to start dunking so that was that was pretty cool because if you look at my family you'd be like there's no way (laughs) he's going to turn out that athletic but I started taking it serious in high school and um, the kind of transitioned to Bradley with Eddie Pappas uh, as the strength coach there. He really had that hard work, grit mindset as well. So that just furthered my development in that path. And then Mike Rayfeld is along that line as well. So it was a good fit. Have you felt that continuity and the kind of s- the ability to transition in the program a little bit more seamlessly with mm-hmm. the, how many guys are have been retained over the past couple years? Yeah, uh, like Coach Miller mentioned earlier, being one of the guys at Bradley who was the example of being there for three years with new guys coming in, it definitely does make a difference uh, being able to stand on the side and watch somebody do the drill or, or kind of, you know, provide an example of the concept so then you have like real visual examples of how to apply it and not just being thrown into the fire having really no idea what you're doing. So having those six guys return and having such high-level players who are returning, to give you that example, has really been helpful. Give us a little insight into this 
behind the scenes what this lo the, this group was like mm -hmm. as an outsider coming in the the word has been everybody is very welcoming how are you yeah. kind of embraced maybe especially since they did even get a chance to to recently play with you before you got here yeah i mean having played here yeah, right. F having played here was pretty funny because then you have some relatable stories about things that happened on the court and such. And then also getting to talk trash to some of the guys like, oh, I, I scored on you now and I get to score on you in practice now. And so, you know, just things of that nature. But uh, yeah, very welcoming group. A lot of great guys. I think when you're wanting to build a winning program, I think character matters over talent. And I think Coach West with a lot of the returning guys scored on both fronts of that. So coming into the locker room, you have a lot of great guys who are very understanding of, you know, your situation and then you have to be understanding of their situation and who they are. And I think you have if you have great character, the you know, the connection is just gonna be seamless. So uh CMOS. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't come here to sit. Does it matter who starts on this team with the depth that you have? Uh, I think when your goal is to win championships, you have to have people who are accepting of roles, right? Not You can only start five people. You can't start 15. So I, I think it doesn't matter. I, I think you guys saw it last year with the six guys they're bringing back. It's a lot of great talent. And with the freshmen and the transfers that have been brought in, it's a lot of great talent. And I think if you want to win, you have to have guys who are accepting of it's OK to be the sixth, seventh, eighth man. You know, it's not always who starts the game. It's more about who finishes the game. So I feel like you've had to work on or tried to work on the most transitioning from Bradley to the Big 12. Um, obviously, a lot be a greater athlete. You know, it's the game. It's not it's a little bit faster just with the better athletes out there. So definitely finishing around the rim you know, having to be more crafty in the lane and then just my shot prep, getting my shot off faster with the, you know, longer athletes, more athletic closing out to me. So just being ready to shoot earlier. What you've seen from Jizzle James, Day Day Thomas there in the backcourt as long as yourself. Have you ever been a part of a backcourt duo or trio now mm -hmm. with 44, 40 to 44 inch verticals there within that group? Uh, so at Bradley, I had the blessing to be a part of a backcourt with Duke Dean, who's still one of my best friends. Um, He's five seven, but I have seen him do a windmill before. I don't know how much his vert is, but it, it's been close. But I've been a part of uh, many great backcourts over my time playing basketball. But with them, it, it's uh, it's been a little different. With guys who can jump 44 inches, are extremely fast and pick you up full court every day in practice. So coming here, I knew I knew what they were. Obviously, having played them, but I knew also they were going to help my game tremendously in in terms of developing. Connor. Um, I think I saw somewhere where you were you were at 40 inches on the vertical, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Was that something that you um, at Bradley you probably like in the high 30s, or is it something that you've been kind of constantly baseline in the 40s? Uh, I don't think I've ever been in the 40s before. I think the training here that Mike Rayfeld does is very, you know, I've done some similar things, but I haven't done things where it, um, it just makes sense. Like a lot of stuff he does is very smart, and I've always been able to jump fairly high. But I think being here, it's really it's really ramp, ramped up. Be by surprise by your athleticism, maybe at the rim. Uh, pretty much everyone. Uh, well, I haven't like dunked on everyone, but I'm saying uh, a lot of people didn't know I could jump like that coming here, and it's not very expected. I'm six two white with a comb over, so. But that works. That works in my benefit, though. But uh, a couple of practices ago, I don't want to put Rayvon on blast. He he did find out though. <laughs> Like on the three and just no, it was on. it was one two steps down the lane on 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 Ray, yeah. So Ray Ray said he's got a bounty on my head right now in practice. He's coming for me. Have you got much huh? Have you got much no, not yet. That's the one I want the most. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Do you consider having comb over on the back of your jersey? Comb over on the back of my jersey? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Um, first off, I'm devastated for Tyler McKinley. Just having a knee injury, especially when you're a freshman, and he was doing he was doing so well. He was great guy, but also great on the court. I mean, he's one of the hardest working players I've seen on the court. You know, extremely great motor. And then with Tyler Betsy, um, he's quiet, but he might be one of the funniest people I've ever met. But my first impression of him was I didn't I didn't know who he was. I mean. I've heard of him, but I didn't know he could shoot the ball like he can. And he's an excellent shooter, great, great off the catch, and he's really developing his game off the dribble as well. I mean, in the next couple of years, he's going to be a major problem, and he's probably going to be a problem this year as well. Anything else? Cool. Thanks,
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. What's going on, guys? How are you? We just heard about uh, a certain dunk that Mr. Hickman got over Ray uh, last week. Wow, Could you explain that a little that. bit? Yeah, he told us about it. Do you want me to talk about it? Yeah, I would like to do, yeah. Damn. Uh, he, said, he said people don't think he's that athletic because he's 6'2 and white with a comb over. But he got Ray. Wow. Uh, and then he said he's coming for CMOS next. Dang, he's sending shots out like that. <laughs> Did he really say that? You watch wow. the video. Connor word Hick for word. Connor Hickman. Wow. Uh, dang, I can't do my boy Ray like that, man. Shout out State Block, man. But, uh, Are you surprised at his athleticism? Let's put it that way. Yeah, so I knew he had bounce. You know, he can windmill, and I think he can do an East Bay, too. But in game, like, really cocking one back and dunking it, he got Ray good. He got Ray good, man. It wasn't like no body to body, but. It was a fast break. He cocked it back, went off one. Ray like flew by him a little bit, and he kind of like, I'll say it was a body, but not no crazy contact one. But it, it made me like, I was like this. But yeah, he got, he got Ray good. I can't believe he said that up here. That's insane. <laughs> that doesn't even seem like Connor, but hey, I give it to him. That was a good dunk, man. G given the ad additions on this team, uh, talent-wise and athleticism-wise and all that, are. Will there be more of that to come, and will, can that be like a contest with it? Obviously, you want to win games, and you, you got to take it serious, but yeah. uh, that could be a private contest between several of you guys. For sure, man. We got some high flyers on this team. Uh, Arrington Page, high flyer. Dylan Mitchell, high flyer. Me, myself, high flyer. Rayvon, high flyer. Day Day, high flyer. Jizzle, high flyer. You know, we got some guys that can really. AZ, obviously. Um, we got some dudes that can really, really get up and dunk. All those dudes I just named can dunk on somebody. You know what I mean? Connor Hickman, obviously, the way he just explained how he got Rayvon. But, uh, yeah, um, Tyler McKinley, obviously, but uh, sad to hear him go down. But, um, yeah, we got some high flyers this year. That's going to be exciting. It's not just like a couple, couple people last year, AZ, me as in like a guard dunking all the time. Um, day days like once in a while like whoa t um, moments jizzle a couple times last year but now we have a lot of players that are going to be doing a lot of exciting dunks fast breaks dunking on people you know but yeah it's going to be exciting to, for the fans to see all the different high flyers we got on the team this year and exciting moments to pick up leads and get the fans going get us going because big plays like that you know can turn the adversity on our side and and really push us to win a game at some points. You said during a UC baseball game that this is going to be your last season at UC. Um, is that still your mindset going into the year? Have you had any adjustments or are you still determined? Well, when I was a kid, that's always been like a, a goal of mine when I was a kid. But um, my mind's not on that whatsoever. Um, not even close to even thinking about that. Like you just saying that just now just reminded me like, oh, yeah, bye bye. But my mind is strictly on the team, you know, like my my mindset's strictly on the team and how far we're gonna get as a team and looking at it day by day. I'm not looking towards like after the season what's gonna happen for me or I gotta do this in order for this to happen or I gotta have this type of year, you know. Um that was just always a, a goal of mine and coming before I even came into college, my goal was to do three years, you know, and um see where see where I'm at and try to go to the NBA has always been like a goal of mine but and a dream of mine. But my mindset now is just strictly on the team and strictly on coming in every day and preparing every day with the team and winning together. I know we have big goals this year, and it's easy to t talk about it and say how great we're going to be, but we got to do it and we got to show it. Like uh, fans probably heard that before, like, hey, they're going to be good, they're going to be good. But we got to show them the first day when we come out here on the floor how serious we are about this year and making March Madness going far into March Madness. How far we go, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, winning a national championship, we get that far, the whole team's going to eat. The whole team's going to win, you know, like no matter what their goal is in their life, NBA, being a business person, being an entrepreneur, like winning a national championship or getting to a Final Four, so that, that sets the whole team up. Everyone on the team wins regardless. So that's my mindset. I just want to win. Coming here with Coach West when he recruited me, 
how serious he is about winning and how serious he is about this program, I want to do that with him. I don't want to just I don't want to just earn things on like to myself and individually and and get someone on myself. I actually care so much to a point where I want this team as organization to go far and I want coach West to do big things here. So, and I want to be part of the team that brings Cincinnati like back into March Madness and into like just a, such a winning program where every year we know we're going to be in the tournament. So, my mind's not on that at all. It's really just winning and making it fun for the fans here. Uh, the shot doctor in to help some of you high flyers with the other part of your game. How's, how's that going? The what? Buckley. Coach Buckley. Shot, uh, shot doc. <laughs> shot doctor. Buckley's been great. Coach Buck's been great, man. We love him and we love how experienced he is. He's very experienced. You know, he's been in a lot of places. Um, I'm not smart to name them all off and to know that much about basketball, but um, he's been to a lot of places. He's very experienced. He knows what it takes. He knows what NBA guys look for and like coaches and scouts like look for in a player. And he knows what it takes to win. He's been on number one national t ranked team multiple times. Um, where was it? Where was it? Marquette. Indiana. Mar yeah, yeah, Marquette in Indiana. I just forgot. But he's been in great programs and great teams that have been number one. And he knows what it takes. So watching us every day and um, seeing how hard we're working and knowing if we're there or not. He tells us every day. He, keep, he keeps it 100 with us, and he tells us if we're there or we're not there, and he hasn't told us we're there yet. So <laughs> we still got work to do. And um, he's very good at, like, knowing about shot prep and reputation. I was talking about this earlier in the podcast with Dan and uh, how, like, he's really precise, and he's big on repetition with your shot, doing the same thing every time, your feet being square to the basket. So... I feel like he helped me a lot with my shot this offseason as well, as well as others just on the team as well. Trends, team leaders, you've been here for a few years. How much continuity and just gel does this team feel like compared to years past where, like, for example, last year, you didn't know who was going to be playing week, first game, first few games of the year with the waivers and everything and all that's kind of mm. settled in behind yeah, you guys now. Uh, it feels good, man, to uh, bring the core back, bring the core players back. And uh, not a, and this – in this era of college basketball and NIL and all that and how you can get players because they see a they see a number on a paper and just go with it like bringing back the core players is such a huge huge like accomplishment and something you can brag about like uh it really says something about coach West and Cincinnati and this program in general and how together we are like i bet Cmos Jizzle AZ and me got offered more money to go somewhere else. And what did we all do? We all came back and stayed together because we believe in what we have here. You know what I mean? Like, and that's a true fact. There's a lot of other universities that I don't know personally that I know offer them money for sure and myself. And that was maybe it was more than here, but and we all chose to come back here and fight together because we know how good we were last year and we know how good we could have been last year to finish some games out and win a couple one-point possession games. But that really says a lot about this program. It says a lot about Coach West and how much we believe in him and him bringing us back and not trying to bring guys in that's going to play more than us or whatever the case may be. But he believes in this core that he's got, and he added some good players to have a big role on this team. How much do you think it's going to help, having been through the Big 12 for a year, and kind of understanding the environments and the intensity and, and how much is on the line every night. And then when you look around at the additions, do you think we're, you're in a position where you're more ready for that night to night grind? Man, uh, I'm a strong believer in like, it's about, it's about how bad you want it. You know, it's about, it's about how bad you want it, how much you prepare for the big moments. We added some great players, and that's going to help us win more games. But it's not going to – adding great players is not going to bring us to where we really want to be. It's more about how hard we play, how much we care, and the preparation we put in in the offseason. If we take practices for granted and have bad practices and then 
we lose a one possession game for, over a dumb foul or for getting a play. That bad practice we had, we could have went over that. And, and, you know, it's the little, little small details that wins us games, you know. And uh, I believe in we're going to be a really good team this year and we got to show it. Like I said, it's not about how I say it. It's about how we do it on the court. But I think it's about how hard we go and how much we preparation for it and how much we care about it to do the actual small things and do the hard work. And then we bring that talent with us. It's going to be hard to beat us. You've mentioned the talent and depth within this roster. What areas of your game have you seen continue to elevate within those, uh, you know, day-to-day -day battles in practice? Um, the stuff I worked on in my off season. Is that what you're saying? What, what areas have you improved within those day-to-day -day battles in practice? Um, I think I proved, I proved a lot more on my shot. Like, a lot, a lot more. I proved a little bit from freshman year to sophomore year, but I think I took the biggest jump my sophomore year off season to my junior year now. Um, my jump shot and... Um, it won't keep getting better or get worse if I don't keep putting in the work. So I got to keep coming in and putting in the work. But that, um, the smarts of the game, my maturity of a basketball player, is I think is the most I matured in of looking over how my sophomore season went. And um, yes, mainly mainly just my shot and uh, playmaking and knowing the game and reading the game and taking the right shots and just being a smart, more mature basketball player. How much did your respect for this league grow after being at going through it in a year? I mean, you've had a year in the AAC to compare and then mm -hmm. a year in the Big 12. Yeah, um, my respect for the Big 12 is amazing. And uh, I have a lot of respect for Big 12. And I think it's the, I, th I don't think I know, it's the best conference in college basketball, for sure. Um, our home slate is amazing. We have some big games to play and I want to make after the after we play those big games. I want people to be playing us and saying we got a big game, you know, and that's what we're going to turn it to be. But man, the Big Twelve is amazing. The atmospheres are amazing. Last year, our first game at Kansas was loud and the atmosphere it was amazing. Um, it was a, it was a fight at Baylor was another fight. Um, a lot a lot at BYU was loud and nice. But man, it's just I'll never. Stop taking it for granted, man. Like, I would never, like, it's just, I, I thank God so much for the blessings I have been, you know, I've been getting lately. And how blessed I am to be in this position to do, to accomplish these great things and, and to keep accomplishing them. And being in the Big 12, it's every single night you have a great game. I mean, every single night you play, you're playing someone that can be anyone. The bottom half of the um, Big 12 to the top half can be anyone. You know, it's a... Big 12 can go anyway. I don't I don't believe in preseason rankings until you get on the court and you play. So a lot of respect for the Big 12. Certain non-conference opponent you haven't picked up a victory against yet. Do you do you look forward to that one? Do you yes, cross down shootout getting them here? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir.